بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم now there is something called administrative administrative distance uh, in terms of cisco uh, every vendor has their own way to call this so administrative distance basically tells you the trustworthiness of the routing information so lower the value is more trusted let's try to understand what is this exactly now let's say we have a router and the router is learning about a specific network let's say there is a 192.168.2. a uh, network and it is learning about this network from multiple different paths it is learning from this side uh, maybe you have configured some dynamic protocol let's say ehrp and also i'm learning from this side maybe an ospf or maybe you can say static let's say or any other protocol so which means there is a possibility that normally most of the time when we configure we don't configure multiple routes multiple static routes or multiple routings but let's say due to some reason you have some multiple routings enabled and you're learning the same information from two different protocols so it has to use any one it cannot say that i'll use both it has to trust any one routing so it has to decide who is more trusted who is more reliable or which which routing exactly i have to use so in this case it will see something called administrative distance values cisco uses this default administrative distance values based on cisco uh, metrics and the ehrp have the administrative distance value of 90 ospf has the administrative distance value of 110 so the router will decide to listen to the ehrp because that is a little bit more trusted so the lower the value, the more trusted. So which means the router will always forward the packet based on the uh, based on the route or the best route which is learned from EHRP. So this is something you will see. Or in other words, you can also say you might be learning from the static route, or you can take a simple example where you have configured two routes. Like in the case of I, uh, in the case of you know default routing or static routing, also will use the same thing where we'll simply say that let's say this is my primary isp connection we use a default routing there is a default routing what we'll see in the default routing section so what we do is i want to make sure that all the traffic should go to the isp via primary link and let's say this is my 150 mbps link and this is my just 20 mbps link so I always want to prefer my 150 Mbps link. So what I can do is I can simply go to this router and I can simply say IP route. So if you have two connections or two next stops, let's say this is 10.001 and this is 11.001. And to reach any network, if I'm using a static route, uh, again, default route will keep it aside. If you are writing a route for any specific network, let's say 200.1.1. network, we say IP route 200.1.1. network whatever the subnet mask and the next hop i'm going to say that it is going to be 10.001 okay and uh, likewise i'll add one more route we call it as ip route 200.1.1 network via 255.255.255.0 via 11.001 and i'll give the ad value as two now there is one more option you will find in the last called administrative distance and if I don't give anything, the default will be one. So it's not just about two different routings. Even if you are learning any one routing, like in the case of static routes or floating static routes or the default routes, we'll use this scenario where you have to decide where you're going to write two destinations, right? For the same destination, I'm writing two different routes, but I'm saying that this is going to be my primary. And the reason because primary because the ad value whichever is a lesser that is more trusted so in my case i'm telling my router one hello router one always use this one always prefer this but let's say due to some reason if this goes down then you can use the second one okay so we call this as a floating default route transfer so again we'll see this in the floating uh, default route example configuration example over there so the idea here is simple a router may actually learn about the same network from multiple routing sources if you have if you have enabled 
like I said, normally you don't enable OSP or EHRP or multiple protocols in the same. But in case if it is learning about this information from both, it is going to compare the AD value. In the case of AD value, the OSPF is 110 and the EHRP is 90. So it's going to select based on the EHRP 90 and it will simply forward or listen to that. Okay. So these are the default AD values which has been defined. We can change them. So the connected always have zero, which is always uh, trusted. And the starting route will always have the AD value of one. You can verify this if you go to the routing table, assuming that if you have already configured the static routes, you can see there is a static route which is being configured and you can see these values here. So technically there will be two values here. The first value defines the AD value and the second value defines the cost. So the cost is something you will see when we go to the dynamic routing, especially if you're using EHRP or OSPF protocols. And the AD value will be mentioned here. So if this protocol is OSPF, you'll see O here, then you'll see the AD value is 110 and then the cost will be changing. So depending upon the protocol, these AD values will change. Okay. So, so what is this AD value? AD value is simple. Uh, it defines which route is more preferable. So, so always when you're enabling multiple protocols or if you don't enable, normally we don't enable dynamic routings like this, but anytime you see the router is going to select this route, not this one, then you have to compare whether, uh, whether there is an AD value configured, which is, it's not configured actually. The AD value is by default present. So the route with a lesser AD value is being preferred. 